If you ask a typical seven-year-old how honeybees get food, what answer would you expect? You might expect them to say that bees look for food that people drop on the floor, that they suck on flowers. But after playing bee sim, one child told us, They fly and they push the pistols. They push the pistol away and the stamens and they collect some pollen and they put it in the pollen basket and they get some nectar and they put it into the honey stuff. The world is filled with systems in every discipline, and systems thinking is increasingly going to be the cornerstone of how we help young children engage in the 21st century. Games like BSIM have the ability to not only help students understand biological concepts at a deep level, but to apply this understanding of systems thinking to a number of domains, including computer science, economics, and even literature, where understanding systems is crucial to success. It turns out there's actually quite a bit of science to explain how bees collect nectar, and the process through which bees collect nectar is an example of a complex system. And this kind of complexity thinking and thinking about systems is a really invaluable 21st century skill for understanding science as well as other disciplines. And so what we've done is develop a couple of tools B-Sign, the software you see right here, and the B-SIM uh, participatory simulation as a way of helping young children as young as kindergarten or first grade to understand this kind of complexity. Uh, typically these ideas prove to be challenging even for middle school or high school students uh, and for adults as well and so what we've tried to do is make them accessible for six and seven year olds with a little bit of help. What we've got here is a simple simulation with two hives and some flowers and in this particular mode we would play a game with the children and the idea is that when I press play they would see the bees flying around and have to guess which hive has bees that are dancing to communicate this location of nectar to each other and which hive is not. And the benefit of that is that it helps them to really reflect upon the patterns that result in the flight of the bees based on that dance. So if we press play here you can very quickly see that this hive is behaving very differently from this one. And not only does this hive have the bees flying back and forth to the flower, but it's collecting a lot more nectar. And that's exactly the kind of concept that we want to make immediately visible to young children so that they can think about the mechanism behind this and really reflect on how that bee dance, which some of them assumed might slow the bees down, is in fact leading to better nectar collection. The other tool we developed to help young children understand how honeybees collect nectar is called the Bee Sim Simulation Game. And this is part of a participatory simulation where young children play the role of a honeybee in order to really understand the challenges that each individual bee faces and what kinds of actions they engage in. So here you see a honeybee puppet which is designed for the child to wear. Then this is a hive and some flowers, and the idea is that we would locate flowers around the classroom or the yard, and children using this puppet would go to the flowers and touch these special fingertips to the flower to check whether or not the flower has nectar. The bee itself would then light up and show the child whether or not the flower has nectar and how much nectar it has, and also tell them how tired the bee is. And the benefit of this over free play is that by having these rules related to uh, the amount of nectar and the energy level of the bee built into the puppet, we can help the children to think about the kinds of constraints that bees face and also to respond to them. So children, when we've played with them, have, will initially assume that they can run around the yard indefinitely in search of nectar. And this is inaccurate. Uh, and doesn't necessarily help them to understand the challenges the bee faces. However, as soon as they have these lights to show them that they're running out of time, they begin to appreciate and then talk about, in really rich ways, the importance of finding nectar quickly and easily and bring it back to the hive. Because the BSIM e-puppets are made with commercially available, low-cost DIY materials like the lily pad Arduino, anyone can get started making their own computationally enhanced puppets through the directions we've shared on Instructables.com. Additionally, the BSign software is already available on the web at joshuadanish.com if you want to check it out.
Lily Pad Arduino technology has already been successfully adopted in underserved after school communities like boys and girls clubs. Our hope is to eventually make these materials more accessible through classroom kits of e puppets that can be skinned to not only model the complex behaviors of bees, but other biological and non biological systems, like termites building mounds, ants foraging for food, or even traffic patterns. Thank you.